Testing one, two, three. So the message today is going to be somewhat about waiting. Uh, so a little more on that later. But I did find this, I think, true story about a fellow named Ed Watt. He was visiting a local department store with his wife, and they had just purchased a suitcase and a cooler. And I want you to remember that. As Ed browsed in the shoe department while his wife was finishing the rest of her shopping, a clerk came up uh, and asked if he could be of assistance for anything. He said, no, thank you. I'm just waiting for my wife. At that point, another man overheard him and said, well, I'm waiting for my wife, too, but I never thought to bring a lunch and an overnight bag. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we laughing? Can we relate to it? Can, can you? What? Ding, 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 ding for me. Anyway. All right, we'll get back to waiting in a minute. So last week's message was, what has he revealed to you? So why do we stir that pot anyway? Well... Because we latch on to the truth of what he reveals. We latch on to things and periodically believe them and act upon them. You know, we're all at different places and that's okay. So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then you believe in him by faith. There's faith involved. We've never seen him and we believe in him by faith. We just believe. There's reasonable evidence, but you have to believe by faith. He's gone. He's been gone for quite a while in person, not in spirit. So, we are called to live by this thing called faith. It's unseen. And, if we do so, it transforms us changes us one day with him after another. That's what changes us. He changes us. Together with him, we are changed. We're transformed. What are we transformed into? Let's look at the verse here. Now, you'll notice I use familiar verses often. There's a foundation of them and kind of do it on purpose so that we indeed Bring those familiar, Randy, uh, Randy, about familiar, who talked about familiar? You do. And uh, familiar with Jeopardy. Well, we can be familiar with God's Word, and rightly so. If we are, then we, it's a foundation under our feet. It's a, something solid in this sandy world, right? So, here in Romans 12, 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. So we do Bible math, right? God gives us the power to add things up from what he has given us so that we indeed can do it. He expects it of us. We're smart enough to do that. And this is one. And so we pick these verses that, wow, those kind of go together that I can believe. So don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world. We used to conform to it fully. But be transformed, there it is, transformed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We start believing new things. Well, I used to just believe any old thing, but now I started going this way and I'm learning new things. And it's changing the way I live. I'm at peace. I have love in my life. I love other people. They say, what happened to you? You know. They say that to Steve all the time. <laughs> so, Sorry, I got to put that. Uh, he's really going to get me. He'll never put it me. Come on. <laughs> so, if we transform the way we think, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. You know, when I was young, it was popular to think and exciting. I can find out the will of God. But what has clouded my thoughts. That doesn't seem to come to mind as much 
as I've gotten older. I don't know why. I don't know what. It's not that I don't think about him and obviously read and meet with him, etc. Maybe I am unconsciously knowing it better, but how exciting it to start when we can hear the words and believe them that we can know his will and aim at that. Being transformed, changing this thing up here one step, one day after another. Transformed into, and be clear, it's not nicer people. It's Christ-likeness. He's not after nice folks. He's after Christ-likeness. And, and we get that by daily grace given by God. It's not alone. I said it earlier. We don't conjure up. Well, I better try harder because I'm not getting it yet. You know. Well, meeting him in the middle is more the picture. He's involved. He has to be involved. He's giving daily grace. He is nearer than our breath. He, he's in our breath. He's given us that breath. Okay, so, daily grace given by God for Christ's likeness. So we cooperate with Him in this. We cooperate. There's unity involved. The unity of being one with Him. And if there's not oneness, then it has to do with we can, we can have that, but usually, always, the fault is on our part. You know, we, we, probably, we may have sin in the way. God and sin can't mix. And so it's at times like this when there's a pause in life. There's less noise. The TV, radio, computer, phone, all of that stuff isn't happening necessarily. Are you on your phone right now? <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, um, we cooperate by hearing his voice and saying, wow, I, I, I need to keep current with him. I, I haven't, my Etch-a-Sketch, remember when we were kids, there was Etch-a-Sketch and sins are on there and I haven't met with God and confessed them. And we can do that and clean the slate and be right with him so that this Christ-likeness, this day, there's no blockage on our part to his bringing about the goodness that he wants to. Because there's this daily offering by him. Lamentations here, 3, 22, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. This is a promise. Remember, the word of God is just promise after promise that this is true. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. I want to be on that team. How about you? His mercies never come to an end. Mercy means we don't deserve it, right? And yet He saves us anyway. They are new every morning. Is that a promise? It is. I saw it in a nod. It is true. His mercies are new every morning. Okay, so I've got to tune in to that station. I remember when I was young, I worked in this for this fella, the, you know, down in the raising capital of the world where I'm from. And he, he lit me his Walkman head thing, and oh, I thought it was the greatest thing ever, you know. It was, it was in the 70s somewhere. And anyway, and I, I had it on whatever my station was, and he said, oh, you can wear out that station. You know, because he had no need for it, right? Anyway, similarly with God, his mercies are new every morning and we can tune in. We can draw near to him. We can turn aside and hear from him and walk with him. It's a real thing by faith. So, and you'll notice at the end here, it says, great is your Faithfulness. Now that's spoken in the first person. That's in person. Great is your faith. How good is it? How happy is he whenever he hears us speak to him 
in, in such a believing way of the goodness of God and we speak it out to him in person man great is your faith you are always I just wanted to thank you today because you are with me you even though I am fall so faulty and yet you are merciful and I bow before you you see how it's going doesn't the father love that from his children? He does. And so, we can please God in this way. Pleasing God. Is there anything better than that? There isn't. Pleasing God by faith. So it says here in Hebrews 11, 6. You should highlight it in your Bible if it isn't already. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Any of you want God's rewards? Wow, somebody asked us, where were we? Do you want rewards? Where were we? And we said, sure. No. <laughs> rewards. We almost cashed him in already. We have made... 250 off of the price. <laughs> <laughs> rewards. But God, see, that's worldly rewards. How long does that last? Not long. I mean, even if they were lasted where you would remember them next week or next month, how about God's rewards? He exists and He rewards those. That means now and later. I like that. Does that ring a bell for you? Something today is going to ring with you that you would latch on to that. You know, Jesus' parable about the sower is so applicable every day. You know, there's seed being cast, but there's some lands on the path, on the rocky soil, on the weedy soil, on the good soil. And we have everything to do with that. It's like the story later about a guy, these guys back in the day, oh, this is a hundred-year-old story, but there was an application, a uh, job opening for a telegraph. They called it the wireless. And, and the waiting room was full of guys that were coming to apply, right? And then all of a sudden, one guy jumps up and runs through the office door where the manager was. Uh... And he returned smiling. He said, I got it. Uh, and the others asked, how did you get, get ahead of us? He says, you might have been considered, you might have been considered if you had, hadn't been so busy talking that you didn't hear the manager's coded message. It said, so over the speakers in the waiting room where all these guys were, was this message in telegraph ease. The man I need must always be on alert. The first one who inter interprets this and comes directly into my office will be hired. And so the guy jumped up because he was the only one alert and listening. And you and I have that same opportunity to be alert and near to the Lord that he indeed exists and that he rewards those who seek him, that we could draw near to him in all that the verse says. And so, drawing near to God is possible. But we better kind of be alert, right? Like the guy. Turning aside is possible. We turned aside this morning. And any other time, maybe you listen to the word of God or read it during breakfast, you were turning aside and it's difficult to say no to our flesh, our lusts, our likes, our... You know, YouTube is so amazing because it has all my interests right on the page. How does it know that? I've looked up things that I'm interested in, and there they are. They don't show stuff Martha's interested in on my page. It pays attention to the IP address of my laptop, and whatever I've looked up, it gives me that stuff. And so it's so interesting, you know, every day. So I have to recognize 
after I've wasted an hour, what am I doing? As interesting as that is, I'm wasting time, right? And so we all must recognize such things and to turn aside. It is possible. Believing Him is possible. Believing Him. You know, these scriptures aren't brand new. They're not newfangled. They're not, but we can believe He. That it says the Word of God is living and active. This is the Word of God, not some man made. It's so tiresome, isn't it, to, to hear the world's salesman, cheap salesman with a cheap suit all the time, and many of them are just lying. Lies, 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 and, and we get dulled down to it. But today, and any time we turn to Him and read, it's the Word of God. And it, it's life-changing if we will believe Him. It's believing in Him, but believing Him is closer. I believe you, great is your faith. You see the difference. He's drawing us near. You know, Romans sitting here. How sweet is it? To, I'm sure bedtime is the, su the sweet time. I, mean, I remember. I can still remember that far back. And you get the favorite books out. And they talk about sweet, tender things, you know. And you don't dare miss that while they're the same because it changes. <laughs> and yet... Here we are. God doesn't have adults. He has children. We are His children. And so we can please Him, believe Him. <clears throat> and so this pleasing, there's a verse. So whether we are at home, Paul is writing this letter back to the Corinthians. It says, so we make it our aim to please Him. It's a target. Remember, remember my illustration, Heidi's brother Andy gave me the bow and arrow set for Christmas, you know, compound bow, it was fun, but I'd never fired one. Where I grew up, we, I had no friends with that. And I missed the whole big target the first time, and then I went, oh, <laughs> I lifted it up, tried again, I got closer and closer and closer, that's aiming. And you and I get to have that opportunity every day. So we can please Him. We make it our aim to please Him. And it goes on. It's not just to be nice, as it says. For we must all appear, all, how many? All appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Okay. There's a test at the end. That, I, I am familiar with tests. I am, hmm. It's like, you ever ran a store? You ever had a cash register? And you had to count the money at the end, and the money in the till had to match the money on the tape. You know what I'm saying? So that there's accountability. It's, you can't steal the money, okay? <laughs> you go to this feed store, and the owner watches those girls like a hawk. He's there every single time we ever go there because somebody stole from him and he ain't going to have it, so he watches. Anyway, God says so much. And we get born again into his family and he says, follow me. And he says, do these things. Primarily, he says, do these things. And then those things replace not doing these things. He doesn't make as big a deal about them. He mentions them, of course. He gives us lists. I almost did the message today on one of those lists. Because we do them. We're not, we're faulty. But the best way to not do them is to do them. You get the picture. Is to, man, I not, I don't. What's sweeter when Roman comes in with a, a flower from the rose you got outside? That's a, I grew up at Rosecrest Dairy in the middle of all those vineyards was a dairy. Rosecrest, and so the parking lot was lined with roses. And when I was his age, I, man, I want to give that to mom, you know, and I break it off and come on, this little kid. You know, and 
she's happy because I was thoughtful, right? Well, that was a good, that was, so it is that we're, all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It's kind of what we meant. Not only did he die on the cross and make our, the way to heaven open, that he should, you know, this morning I had to put a chicken down and, uh, and it bled all over and, you know, there's no, anyway. So then we sing these songs about the blood of Jesus. Oh my gosh. It, it, it hits you closer to home if you just saw blood. In that you know what I'm saying? And, well, there's something good about it though, right? It's good to know Jesus shed real blood. All his blood went to the cross for your sake and mine. My sins put him on the cross and and they, he bled out and he gave up his life. It's grisly. It's ugly. And that's what he did. And that's what he did for you. And so, so when we turn aside, it's not just avoiding hell that we want. It's a good reason to turn aside. But it's better. It's also my Lord gave his life so that I could make it. He, he, he gave me life so that I, and freedom that I could choose to come his way. More on choosing later. Anyway, there's trouble out there. Have you noticed? Mm -hmm. I've mentioned some of it. And that trouble gets in us. It's in us. It's near as our elbow. Here it says in Proverbs 4.23, Above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. So we guard what comes into this thing, into us, into our spirit. That's our heart, our mind, our heart. It's all conglomerated in there somehow as our spirit. So if we keep coming to him by faith in this tender way that a kid would come to the folk, to the parents, then, oh, we see that tender heart of a child we can do that with our Lord. It's keeping current with Him. Um, so we're going to look at Mark 10 today about this rich young ruler who went to Jesus to ask Him about eternal life. Why? Why is it relevant for today? It is relevant today because people are looking for how do I inherit eternal life? You, you know, people... Everyone might not be so interested all the time, but you know when they get interested? When you and I say, well, I used to be lost, but now I'm saved. I, I know that I'm saved. And if somebody isn't saved, you know what they think? And they're, wow, what? what? Wait a minute, I think that applies to me. What do you mean? How do you know? What did you do? What are you thinking? Where, where did you go? How do you have this new peace? Whatever it is. You see where I'm going, right? And so that's what makes us the light of the world because it, I used to be lost and now I'm found. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. We just sang the new song, right? And so here's a guy coming to Jesus saying, how do I inherit eternal life? So chapter 10 and verse 17. <laughs> so the, I, I waited for the full message reveal until this moment. Uh, waiting, really, is stop waiting. And I just am amazed that every time we read through the Gospels and, and, and even beyond in, in the New Testament about all the healing and miracles and, that just accompany Jesus' presence. It's awesome. And... And I just imagine, if I was there, oh, that would just be so convincing. And I would be all transformed all of a sudden because I saw miracles or I believed that they happened. But if, if anyone watching The Chosen out there, mm -hmm. you know, you watch the show The Chosen, and boy, those, those 
Well, the followers of his, those are bosses. Man, are they ever slow to get it. <laughs> and, but the show isn't making that up. We read it in the Bible. They see these great miracles and then all of a sudden they're arguing over who's the greatest among them are. Oh, man. And then they're doing it on purpose and Jesus is showing us that, look at my followers, even if they're with me for three years straight, they still have lapses. They still screw it up. They still need me. They still got to look to me. They still have to increase their faith. They still have to grow. They still have to keep coming. You see how it all works together. So, here in verse 17. So, so stop waiting is this opportunity for us to, we just make excuses for ourselves. We justify ourselves. Well, not that bad. I don't want to think about all that right now. I believe in those things after all. You know, we're waiting. I don't have to really do all of that. You know, whatever we were waiting for, Heidi hates waiting, you know, for me. <laughs> and, and hopefully I recognize it before it's happening too long. You know what I mean? But what about God? Is he waiting, waiting, waiting for us to just keep coming? It's not to become super somebody. It's just to keep coming. And so, maybe something in here God is going to speak to us about. So we can stop waiting. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Okay, just a short pause. Is that the truth? No one is good except God alone? Nobody. It is. Nobody's good enough. Nobody. We all blow it. We all need a Savior. If we got saved, we still confess our sins the next week. Oh, I blew it today, Lord. That's what he says. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from how much? All unrighteousness. That's what we got. So we do that. So, no one is good except God alone. It's okay. He's made a provision for us, a way to be forgiven. Verse 19, he answers him, You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Jesus goes through the list of the moral law, the Ten Commandments, the stuff how are you doing with the, you know, the basic ones? The, and we all can look. And we look there to see, like this said, false witness. What does that mean? We lie. Lie every time you watch Ray Comfort on YouTube. That is a great guy. He goes through these. He says, have you ever told a lie? Nobody ever fights him on it. Oh, yeah, all the time, you know. I mean, just... Of course I've lied a lot. I mean, that's how they answer. Besides all the other ones that are true also. Okay, so. <coughs> that helps us with this. No one is good except God alone. And the fellow answers. And, and he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Jesus is inviting him to follow him. Wow. He is inviting him to be a disciple. Okay, we saw this in the chosen Nicodemus met him at night. It was, it's a marvelous scene, really. And Jesus hugs him and he invites him. It's not too late. Come and follow. Come and join me. Being one of my disciples. But Nicodemus had standing. He had pride in, in who he was. The whole community looked up to him. He was a top dude. And even though he was waiting for the Messiah, he didn't want to give up his place. Ugh. How about you? He challenges us and he calls us to come to him. Come 
follow me. Jesus is looking for those that are desperate and poor and hungry and hungry for the righteousness of God, hungry for the things of God. Uh, we failed at life. And, and so if he is calling you, he might be calling you today. And he is. That's him. That's his voice. Come, follow me. He, he can make the bottom spoke the top spoke and nothing flat when we give up our life and start following him today. <coughs> Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He went away. He went away from Jesus. Is that the right thing to do? It isn't. It's never the right thing. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. Wow. All of us should heed these words. That it is a struggle to follow. He says it's the narrow way. The way is narrow and hard that leads to life, and few find it. That's the words of Jesus to us who will hear his words and let those seeds fall on the good soil so that that bears fruit. I want that to bear fruit. I am willing to do the hard thing. I will hear his vision. See, there's this thing my mom used to say, he has vim and vigor. You ever heard the phrase? Vim and vigor. I don't know what Vim ever meant. I just realized that because I saw someone else give Vim and make it as an acronym. So I have a new meaning. Vim stands for vision plus intention plus method. Okay, this is Vim. So the vision is Jesus is telling us what to do. That's the vision. Intention, the I, is I, by my will, can intend to do that. I say, yes, I will. And then the method is the how-to. So we know he has given us the how-to. Come, do not stop meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Come. And not only come, but invite others and say, we have found good bread of Jesus Christ and we're believing his word and we're coming together. Come on Easter, right? And he also says, pray, pray this way. Look it up in Matthew 6. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. He says, love others. He says many things of how to live. Uh, these are the methods these are the, you know, listening to his word every day, reading from his word and believing him, pulling aside. These are, Randy mentioned, the spiritual disciplines. It takes discipline, but when we hear the words, it's narrow and hard and few find it. This is the vision of the truth. Well, but he's calling us to be one of those. And I can be with his help. You see how it comes together. And then 25, he says, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? You see, it seemed just like today. We make so much of riches. Back then, if somebody was rich and wealthy, they weren't poor and in the dirt. You know, it seemed blessed of God. So it seemed that the rich were indeed saved because they were rich. God did it. But that's not what Jesus says. And then Jesus finishes with the kicker. <clears throat> Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Okay. It's with Him that we make this, these steps. 
these steps in his direction toward the light with his my hand and his. You know, there's moments, you know, I know Roman's just hanging on my every word right now, <laughs> where a child of God listens when God is speaking. We listen like a child would and heed his voice. Dad, how do I get that candy? I'm listening, you know. <laughs> He is intent. He's going to do exactly what Dad says. You know. Well, so it is for us when he says it's impossible on our own to go our own way. I've got to go the way of Jesus who is calling me to walk with him today through this life. It's different. This life is, there's a pastor who's died. He's died. Didn't look up the years. His name's Dallas Willard. He's been dead about 10 years ish. He recalls growing up in Missouri when the Rural Electrification Administration, or EPUD, equivalent, <laughs> they extended the electrical lines to his home in Missouri. And he says, when those lines came by our farm, a very different way of life presented itself. And this isn't far from our world, because Heidi's dad, Hank, who's 94, you know, electricity came to their farm in North Dakota in 1947. You know, that's not that long ago. And they were without power until then. Anyway, then this fellow continues, says, our relationship to fundamental aspects of leisure, preparing food, and preserving it, could then be vastly changed for the better. We can imagine it. A refrigerator, appliances in the kitchen that helps with food preparation, etc., right? All of the electrical things that we, wow, just take for granted now. But he says, not everybody did it. They were suspect. They were some, there were rumors that the electricity would kill you. I mean, really. Room that guys against the form that they used spread lies. They said, oh no, I don't kill. And, and they used the electric chair as a as an example. Look at that killed that guy. You don't want that at your house. And people believed him. What do you believe? You see, they had to decide. They were at a juncture, fork in the road, and they had to decide, which way am I going to go? <clears throat> am I going to listen to Jesus? It's new and different, and it seems inconvenient often. I, I usually like doing this stuff, listening to my YouTube things, <laughs> instead of listening to what Jesus has to say. See, it's kind of like that. But... He is strengthening us, you see. He is speaking. He is beckoning. He is saying, keep coming. Take, take a step. Hold my hand. Walk with me. <clears throat> How many signs do you need? Are you, are you waiting for something spectacular? Are you waiting, waiting, waiting? Well, I'll get around to it. Encouraging to stop waiting. Whatever it is, whatever cream has risen about following him, listening to him, reading from his word, he is offering the real food, the good stuff. He is really offering it. Remember, demons believe in Jesus. They know for sure that he's real. He did all that stuff, but they don't <laughs> obey him at all. They're dumb. They hate him. They won't follow him. He calls us forward to take steps. He calls us to repent. Here's a saying. We repent enough to be forgiven, but do we surrender enough to be changed? Let's pray, shall we? God, thank you for leading us, leading us today. 
most of us in here, of course, have repented and turned to you for salvation, and you've taken our hand. But we're weak and need strength and help, and of course you're here. And you tell us that the way is hard and narrow that leads to life, and we acknowledge right now, we know we need your help and duty. So help us stop waiting for anything that would hold us up. That you have given us ideas right now that we can put into practice to use for you, for our lives, to indeed take those stronger steps, one after the other. <coughs> May your will be done in us that we can know as our mind is transformed. Help it all happen this week. And help it happen for a reason. You would continue to have us come together and be used as a church. The church has got all the body parts, and I don't have near enough. We all have got to stand together, Lord, as you intend. Because we're all different, we all make up the body. So may that body be at work in these days as we look forward to celebrating your resurrection and inviting folks to come. May your will be done in us and for your glory. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen.